this formula provides a way for calculating the area of a triangle directly from its side lengths only. But what about the volume of a tetrahedron if you're given its side lengths? Well, today we're going to develop a formula for the volume of such a tetrahedron. And the volume looks like something like this. So the volume of the tetrahedron is the square root of the absolute value of a determinant that looks like this, divided by 288. So the determinant has the squares of the lengths of the actual tetrahedron. And they're written in a specific order. So first we have the squares of A, B, and C, which are the squares emanating from one particular vertex. And then we pick another vertex and write in the squares of those lengths emanating from that one that we haven't seen before, which are D squared and E squared. And then the remaining length here, right over here. So this is an interesting formula, and we're going to see the development of it. And also, we'll see a lot of interesting tools from linear algebra along the way. This determinant in the 3D case is called a Cayley-Menger determinant, and there's a larger version for d-dimensional volumes that we're not going to talk about here. But in general, it turns out that the volume of a d-dimensional tetrahedron from its many side lengths is the determinant of something that looks very similar to this, uh, divided by a constant that looks like this as well, which is 2 to the d times d factorial squared, and then a square root. So we'll have something like the absolute value of the determinant of a matrix where you have ones, ones, zeros along the diagonal, and then the squares of the lengths taken one from one vertex at a time going in any particular order. Okay, so here we see, for example, when d is 3, in the three-dimensional case, we get 2 cubed times 3 factorial squared. Um, that is 8 times 6 times 6, which actually is 288. Okay, so let's dive in and see why this formula for the volume of a tetrahedron directly from its side lengths actually holds. So to get us started, what we'll do is we'll picture this tetrahedron actually living in R3. And so what we'll do is assign vectors V1, V0, V2, and V3 to the vertices of this actual tetrahedron. So if you imagine this living in three space then, then these vertices will have actual coordinates. I'll make the coordinates these coordinates here. So the coordinate of VI, the coordinates of VI are VI1, VI2, and VI3. Okay, so in that light, if you actually took vectors emanating from one of the vertices, let's say V0, we'd have a vector like this, a vector like this, a vector like this, the volume of this thing will be a determinant in terms of the vectors that are these vectors right here. So V1 minus V0, V2 minus V0, and V3 minus V0. I'm actually writing these a little bit differently. So here, if you look at this vector right over here, it's actually the entries of V1 minus V0. And then here we have V2 minus V0 and V3 minus V0. And the determinant of this matrix would give you the volume of the parallelopiped whose side lengths are these things. Okay, so just like in the two-dimensional situation, if you had two vectors, the area of the parallelogram Spanned by them is the determinant of the matrix where we do the similar thing, but we'd have a two by two thing going on because we're in a plane. So the area of this triangle here is going to be a half of that. A similar thing happens in 3D. The volume of the parallelopiped spanned by these three vectors is the determinant of this thing right over here. And so if we let this matrix be A, then the determinant of A is the volume of the parallelopiped. And similar to what happens in the plane, this multiplied by a sixth is going to be the volume, or the absolute value of this, is going to be the volume of the tetrahedron itself. Okay, so this is something that's actually talked about um, in a linear algebra course. Sometimes this is also discussed when you talk about Jacobians in a course on multivariable calculus. We're going to pad this a little bit for our purposes, and we're going to see why that's useful by introducing V0 in this first row. So we'll have V0, 1, V0, 2, V0, 3. And so then the determinant, if we want the determinant of this here, we can put a one here and zeros here, and the determinant of this by expanding on this column is gonna be the determinant of this submatrix here, which is exactly this piece right here. Okay, so I've changed the A that we thought we would have, which is this three by three matrix, to this larger one. And we're gonna explore what happens with this A matrix um, to figure things out. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually change the A matrix by performing a row operation. 
or a series of them. So if we take this row and add this row, that'll get rid of all of these negatives right over here. So we could do that. And then it'll introduce a one in this last spot. Okay, and then we can do that with these other rows as well. So let's go ahead and perform the row operation that takes this and adds this row and takes this row and adds this row. Now what we're left with, because we performed these row operations, is a matrix whose determinant will not have changed. So the determinant of this subsequent matrix in absolute value multiplied by six is still the volume of this uh, tetrahedron that we're considering. So we're gonna play around with this specific matrix here. We're gonna also need to consider the matrix where we take this and replace all of these by zeros. So I'm gonna write both of those down in the corner and then look at them in order to compute this determinant and then subsequently have a formula for the volume. So I went ahead and wrote the matrix A here and the matrix B I'm gonna be using, which is the matrix A with this column removed. So we replace all of these, or not with this column removed, but with this column replaced by all zeros. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is consider the matrix A, A transpose. Now, the thing I wanna mention about it is we actually know a little bit about its determinant. The determinant is a product of the determinant of these two matrices, and the determinant of A transpose is the same as the determinant of A. So this is the determinant of A all squared, right? And by what we mentioned here, that's actually 36 times the volume of the tetrahedron that we're interested in. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down actually over here, that the determinant of A, A transpose actually equals 36 times the volume of the tetrahedron we're interested in squared. And what we're gonna do is figure out a way to express the entries of AA transpose, or at least a matrix close to AA transpose that has the same determinant as AA transpose, in terms of the lengths of these edges right over here. Okay, so in order to get an idea of where this is going, I wanna talk about some of these lengths. So for example, if we look at the vector V naught, V2, going from V0 to V2, its length maybe we'll represent as L02. The square of that is the dot product of V2 minus V0 with itself. So it's going to look something like V2, V2, the inner product of V2 in itself, minus twice the inner product of V2 with V0, plus the inner product of V0 with V0. Okay, so what we're gonna to move towards is somehow using the determinant of this thing to find an expression that involves terms like this. And so the reason really to consider AA transpose is if we look at AA transpose itself, its entries will look like we're moving towards this target. In particular, if you take a look at this matrix, it's ij entry is the ith row of a dot product the jth column of a transpose. The jth column of a transpose is the jth row of a, trans of a itself. So this is the dot product of the ith row of a with the jth row of a. Okay, so if we look at that, for example, in this first situation, we have the dot product of this with this, right? And the dot product of this, this entire length or this entire first three entries right here are the entries of V naught itself. So this will look like V naught dot V naught plus one. And in fact, all of these entries will look like that, where in the ith row and the jth column, we get VI dot VJ plus one. Okay, now notice, if we replace all of these entries with zeros, we'd get here instead the inner product of something like V naught, V naught plus zero, et cetera. Um, and so B transpose or BB transpose is this same matrix where instead in the ith row and the jth column, we have the inner product of VI and VJ. Okay, we're interested in computing the determinant of AA transpose because it's related to this quantity that we're interested in right here. And what we'll do is pad this a little bit. It's a four by four matrix. This is the same as the determinant of the matrix where we put AA transpose right over here and place five ones here and pad with zeros on this left-hand side. 
Now it's going to seem like this is kind of a random move, but we'll see in a minute why something like this might be useful. Okay, so now the entries of this thing all look like vi.vj plus one. So we can do a bunch of row operations to actually eliminate things. What we'll do is we'll take any row right here and subtract the first row. Right, so every single row here, we're gonna subtract the first row. So what happens in this block then is that every single entry that looks like viv.vj plus one gets replaced with a vivj, which then replaces this entire block by b, b transpose. Okay, and then this stays the same because we've only subtracted these bottom rows, but then we have a negative one all over in these spots here. Okay, now we can multiply this column by negative one. We'll get that this is the negative of the determinant where we replace these all by their negatives. Here we'll have a negative one and then a one, 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 one. Okay, and then we can actually do a little bit of a replacement that's interesting. Um, so our original formula had something like a zero, a bunch of ones, a bunch of ones, and then things involving the lengths of the actual uh, uh, tetrahedron itself with zeros along the diagonal. So it'd be nice if we could have a zero right over here. And we can actually make that happen. And the reason why is because the matrix B itself had a column consisting of all zeros. So as a consequence, B, B transpose itself doesn't have full rank. And so BB transpose is a matrix whose determinant is actually zero. It has a non-trivial null space. So when we expand the determinant of this thing, if we expand it, say, along this row, we get negative one times the determinant of this piece plus some other things. But the determinant of this piece is zero. So if we replace this with a zero, we would get the same result expanding along this row. And so the determinant of AA transpose is the determinant of this thing right over here. Okay, and again, I wanna look at a prototypical element of this, right? So the ijth element looks like the inner product of vi with vj. So if we actually want to work toward building something that looks like this, we'll need to do a few things. First of all, we need to introduce all of, because we have VIs and VJs that might be different here, we need to introduce all of these negative two factors somehow. So let's do that by multiplying each of these rows by a negative two. If we did that, we'd have five copies of negative one, which would make this negative a positive. And then, we'd have to balance out the multiplying by two. So I'll do the multiplication by negative two everywhere here. Um, so we actually have five in total, so the negative goes away. Um, and then we have five copies of two that need to be balanced by a one over two to the fifth. Because every time we multiply a row by two, that changes the determinant by multiplying by two. And then we have the negative two times BB transpose in all of this block right over here. Just to emphasize things, I'll make this a whole block. Okay, so this is a negative, the prototypical ijth element in here. I guess this is, this should have been j and this should have been i, but that's okay. Looks like um, this, negative two uh, times the inner product of vi and vj. Now we have these other things to worry about, which is in every single jth column, introducing a vjj and every ith row introducing a vii. Okay, so we can do that um, by doing a little bit of a change. So first, I'm gonna multiply this entire column by negative a half. And so then that makes all of this ones. So we're rescaling down again, and that changes the determinant by a factor of negative two. And then we can do the same thing on the first row, multiply by factor out the negative two, 
and then we get ones over here. Okay, so then this thing is going to be instead of 1 over 2 to the fifth, a 1 over 2 to the third, because we factored out 2 twice, negative 2 twice. Okay, so now the determinant of AA transpose is 1 over 2 cubed times the determinant of this matrix that we have right over here. Now, how do we augment this? Well, here's the thing that's really interesting. Let's say you wanted to pad this particular column right here in an appropriate way to introduce a term like this one right over here that might show up in every single one of them. The terms in here have all the j's constant. So what we would need to do is introduce this type of term right over here, which is a vj inner product vj to every single one of these columns right over here. And we can do that by taking this matrix and adding in the inner product of vjj times the vector 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. If we did that to any one of these columns j, it would add in this factor right over here exactly in this block, right? And it doesn't change the determinant because we're adding a constant to any particular column, a constant multiple times this column. And we can similarly do the same thing to get all of the VIIs intact, right? Because this row here is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we can add to any particular row the inner product of VI, VI times that first row. So doing that step by step doesn't change the determinant and we'll end up with something now where the ij entry looks like what we had before, which was the inner product of vi with vj, but then adding in the inner product of vj with vj from our column operations and then adding in vi vi from our row operations. Okay, but by our observation right over here, that is precisely the thing that we're interested in to begin with, which was um, the inner product of vi minus vj with vi minus vj. So this means that this entry will actually be the square of the length of the vector emanating from vi to vj, except when i equals j, in which case it's going to be 0. So we get something like 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1 on the columns, zeros along the diagonal, and then for the ij entry, the length of ij squared, which coincided with the squares of the lengths that we had in the original picture. Okay, so this is really cool, um, and if we put things together then, this matrix that we end up with is the matrix that we started with, with the lengths of the squares. And what we have is that the determinant of AA transpose is 1 over 8 times the determinant of this thing, but at the same time is 36 times the volume squared. So let's take these together. I'll replace the length ij squared pieces with the actual squares of the lengths that we had um, in the original uh, part of this video and then see what formula pops out. Okay, so from what we just proved, the determinant of AA transpose is this, but it's also this. And so these two quantities right here are equal, which means that the volume of the tetrahedron squared times 36 times this two cubed is the determinant of this matrix right over here. And so if we rearrange, we get that the volume of the tetrahedron is indeed this quantity here, that's 36 times 8, which is 288, times the determinant of this matrix right over here that has the square of the lengths inside of it. Okay, cool. So now you have a way to calculate the volume of any tetrahedron if you know its side lengths and can compute some determinants.